now. She was born in Basra in Iraq just before the Iran-Iraq war. But she grew up in Tottenham in London. But for Alia Marquat, her home country was never far from her mind. Her music has been described as a poignant fusion of the sounds of war in Iraq and the sounds of beauty. And judging by her music, there's certainly plenty of beauty to write songs about. Alia Marquat's first album is called Chai Party and was released last month. Well, before I speak to Alia, let's have a listen to a song from her album. It's called Fugal Nakat. <laughs> joins me now. Welcome to the programme. I didn't pronounce yeah. Fugon Nakal very well, did I? It was fine. How would you pronounce it? Fugon Nakal. Lovely. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> now, so you were born in Basra yeah. just before the Iran-Iraq yes, war. What was it like growing up in Iraq at that time? I think, I mean, I was really quite young, but I, I think everybody experienced a lot of upheaval. So fathers, brothers, and sons were conscripted um, and everybody else you know just got busy with trying to get on uh, the women got really busy essentially looking after their kids and going to work and doing everything they needed to do so I think there was a lot of uncertainty it was the first war in Iraq for some time I mean people who were born when I was born have since lived through three wars um, and also sanctions for 13 years so um, you know, it, it's the beginning of a lot of change for people, I think. So how old were you when you moved to Tottenham in London? Oh, really little, still, but, you know, about three, three years old, four years old, so. Um, we... Uh, my mum came first, so it's, it's not that clear, because we... She came and then we went back and then came back again, so ultimately, you know, we landed here in the mid-80s. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tottenham was... It was great. <laughs> it was I, great. I bet it was. <laughs> um, so, but how important was it to you to, to hold on to your Iraqi heritage when you were in Tottenham? That's come and gone. Um, so I think when I was younger, it was really, really important. So through my childhood, I'd gravitate towards anybody else who may be from there or Arabic. And my parents kept it alive a lot at home with the music and the films they watched and also we spoke Arabic at home and I learned to read and write Arabic you know with my dad um, so that was really important and then through my teenage years I got quite angry because there was a lot going on and I was involved in a lot of protesting and things like that and then there came a point I think probably not that soon after 2003 where I just didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore it was a sort of I had just had enough and of everything the identity of being Iraqi held for me um, so in some ways this album and this music has been a re-emergence of me sort of integrating that identity again and getting back in touch with my roots in a new way. I mean, you're very much influenced by Iraqi folk songs, yeah. isn't it? What is it about folk music in Iraq that, that, that makes you want to record these songs? I think it's just as old as time, and I think it connects generations. So my great-grandma would sing this music, um, and so would my grandma, and so would my mum, and then so would I. And so I think there's an intergenerational element to it. But also I think it just reminds us of a better time. So... Um, you know, it's all about love and lust and all those human things. So, yeah. yeah, indeed. Um, and the album is described as a fusion between the sounds of war and the sounds of beauty. Yeah. What beauty are you referring to? I guess, for me, it's about the human voice. So I think the human voice and song um, is something that connects me, I think, with what's beautiful about people and what's beautiful about being Iraqi and you know the sa the sound of other people's voices is really important so the album's called chai party yeah. <laughs> uh, and chai means tea doesn't yeah it, it does in yeah Iraqi. It so does. It's, it's a tea party yeah. um tea is a very uh, it's a very big thing in Iraq isn't it it's a very cultural thing it's extremely important yeah we um drink it 
all the time. <laughs> um, we drink it like dark and sweet and infused with cardamom. And uh, we sit around and we have it on a stove all th at all times. Um, it's a big part of how we socialize, yeah. Um, so you trained uh, over here as a mezzo-soprano, yeah. and you, you were very lucky to be trained with the former lead soprano from the Bolshoi Opera yeah. in Moscow, weren't you? What, what was that like as an experience? I expect quite that was amazing. Yeah, it was quite extraordinary. Um, I think I got very lucky, um, and the benefits have been really wonderful. Um, I was in the right place at the right time, and a lot of it has been luck, I think. It's been sort of being a certain way, singing a certain way, having a certain timber and then taking it from there. But I think it's been lovely to be able to then take what I've learned within a sort of a Western structure and apply it to what's within me and what's, you know, original within me. Yeah. Do you ever see yourself going back to Iraq? Do, do you still regard that as home? I think... I, I am one of those people, I think the diaspora generally will tell you that home is where the heart is in some ways. It's that you sort of create home with people rather than places if you don't have the choice. And um, going back to Iraq is something I think I would love to do. It's difficult. I don't know what the impact would be on me because obviously I'm full of fantasies and memories and all that sort of thing and I don't know what the reality would be like but one of my big goals is to be able to go back and perform for people in Baghdad or Basra. Or Do you think that would be possible? Can you, can you actually see that happening? Well, yeah, why not? That would That'd be, be amazing. fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be really good. Okay, so, so just tell us what's the album called, how can people get hold of it and what songs are on the album? Sure, so it's called Chai Party. Um, it is available on Bandcamp if you look up Chai Party or Two Rivers Records. Um, it's also available on Amazon. Um, there are a range of songs on it. So there's Iraqi folk music, there are some of my own compositions, which are sort of more contemporary jazz, and some more urban things in there. We use a human beatbox on the song. So um, it's all mixed in. So my whole musical journey, I think, is presented on that album. Um, and we're performing it live on the 6th of April at the Vortex Jazz Club in London. Um, Fantastic. And it would be great to pe for people to come along and, you know, I'll sign their copies and things if they care for that. Um, <laughs> but the albums will be on sale there as well and you get to hear the music live. So oh, fantastic. Well, yeah. well, Ali and Marquette, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining complete me. Complete pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck thank with you. it.